What's up everybody? Today I'm going to talk about uh, the pros and cons of bodybuilding, I mean fitness, competitors, uh, bikini, men's physique, classic physique, all that. So I'm going to talk about the pros and cons of being a bodybuilder and the size and the sacrifices you had to make. Um, basically, when you're huge, um, like you see those guys are huge or massive. I was there before I was about 265, um, ripped, shredded, walking around. I could have been like 280 if I wanted to push it and have that puffy look that looks like shit and that, you know, it's hard on your heart and everything like that. So basically being that big, what you have to do. People don't understand what it takes to look like that. And they just assume a steroids, drugs. First of all, right now I'm about 240. I work out maybe twice a week with a client. So I'm not training heavy. I eat maybe two meals a day. Um, if it's more than that, it's hamburgers or crackers or chips or cereal. Um, and I stay looking better probably than 90%. I'm not trying to be cocky or anything here. This is just facts. I stay better looking than 90% of the population that take steroids are in the gym seven days a week and live, eat, uh, live, sleep, eat bodybuilding. Um, uh, the fact is they're just, their genetics aren't good. And if you don't have good genetics, no matter what you do, you can't beat those guys with superior genetics that you can beat the guys with good genetics that aren't doing the, you know, the good nutrition, the good supplementation, the good training, but the ones that are doing all that, you just can't beat plain and simple. It's not like, Oh, I'm going to work harder or be better. You're just not, you're not going to beat them. Um, with my clients, I, I pull some pretty, I call them miracles because they, their, their transformations are crazy of, you know, some of my clients. So, um, I don't say anything's impossible because I bring clients into shows that they never think they could win or even place in the show and they're going home with the overall win. Like I said, all my clients, I haven't had a client in probably four years that has gotten out of the top three. And pretty much the season I have, I had all winners. So every single show I've had clients at, which was 85% or 90% of the shows, all my clients were winners. So let's get back to talk about um, being heavy and, and, you know, having to put on all that muscle and size. Okay. You're eating seven, eight meals a day. So each meal you're eating about eight to 10 ounces of, of meat protein. Um, if you're carb sensitive, you're not eating that many carbs You're more eating more greens. And then if you are not carb sensitive, like me, I had to have a lot of carbs. I'm eating about 60 to 70 grams of carbs per meal. Um, and it's miserable. It's, and so the thing is, I'm 34 now. I started at age 18 doing this. I would start in the morning with like 15 boiled eggs and uh, three cups of oatmeal and three banana. I mean, I, I ate crazy stuff and then I would snack throughout the day in between my meals because I was a naturally skinny kid. And so um, I didn't hold fat easily. So I could eat tons of food and I worked out and then my body just got full at first and eventually I just started putting on muscle easily. So being that heavy, um, you don't feel good. Those guys that looks really cool, um, their body looks nuts, but they're not comfortable at all. Most of them have sleep apnea. Um, you're breathing heavy all the time and people is like, Oh, well, they, they have a bad heart. They're not going to live long. No, just when you're that weight and you're eating that much food all the time, you're just out of breath. It doesn't mean you have a bad heart. Um, some people, you know, has a bad heart if they're taking too many hardcore supplements and if they're way overweight, yeah, they might have a bad heart, but you can't generalize. Um, you're, you have to sleep a lot. You have to sleep at least eight hours a night to really grow. Um, you have to be in the gym, you know, doing your cardio or doing your weight training, doing your posing practice and on the therapeutic side, chiropractic, massage therapy, acupuncture, whatever it is you do. Um, that's just a part of 
you know, being on top. Like, like I said, if you want to be, the, I'm talking about being the best. If you're just trying to like do and compete, like a lot of people do these days that just get up on stage. What I, like I'm 34. So I, I competed, I was, started competing when I was 18. And what I see now is people just get up on stage and they just like want to do it. And they really don't care. They look in the mirror and I don't know what they really see because they go to the show and they get their ass kicked. And then they're, all their friends are like, good job. Nice try. I'm so proud of you. What are you proud of? You got a spray tan on, you paid an entry fee, and you got up on stage and got your ass kicked. There's nothing to be proud of that. And, you know, it's so funny. I just like, you know, I just, I just, uh, you know, want to thank everybody and all my supporters of, you know, of, uh, that supported me through this whole prep and diet. And it's like, dude, you didn't even diet right. You didn't even train right. You didn't even do this right. Even if you have bad genetics, you still can come into a show shredded and ripped because I've done it with tons of clients I've had that has bad genetics and it's just it's a new generation of competitors and then a lot of the competitors they don't know um, they don't know some of the people that was higher up in the sport or like I meet people all the time that just started bodybuilding and they're and, they're, and they look good and then and I meet them and they really don't know who I am or they don't know, know who some other top guys were or even top pros um, and I've even met some bikini girls. They don't even know who Jay Cutler or Ronnie Coleman is. And that's terrible. And it, it's because there's no magazines anymore. I got popular because I was in magazines. And so people would look through the magazines and they would see me and I'd be in like a bunch of magazines and I would have write-ups and I'd be sponsored by nutrition companies that would put tons of ads out. And now you just have, we just have social media and it's whoever is the best at playing on Instagram and, and those usually are the young, young kids like under age 25 or the best, you know, so you got this person with a crazy looking body. They look nuts. And you got this other person that looks like they've been working out maybe three months and they have a hundred thousand followers, tons of likes on their pictures. And you're just, and it's frustrating to, to some people. And it's just like, how do these people you know, have all this. You gotta, you gotta understand the, the people's mentality. Their mentality and uh, the generation is about like, they, some people will do anything for likes. So they wake up in the morning and they post a picture of their breakfast every freaking morning. And it's like, they do this for likes. They do everything throughout their day in life for likes on social media and the internet, which isn't the real world. That's why social media has, you know, it's brought a lot of good into being, um, you know, for people be, being able to market themselves for services that, you know, didn't have the means or money to mark, to, you know, to pay for marketing before, but also has ruined a lot of things. Like I, it, it has ruined the fitness industry, I think big time, and it has ruined bodybuilding a lot. Um, and it's made girls, you know, basically do, it's not fitness and it's not a fitness shoot to me. If a girl's doing a picture or doing a shoot and a thong bent over or they're half their nipples out of their show, that's that uh, out of their shirt. That is not a fitness shoot to me. That's like, uh, pretty much like, I would say porno shoot to me. If you're, you know, in a thong bending over, have your nipples hanging out or whatever. That's not a, that's not a fitness shoot to me. So you know, all these girls, I mean, I, it's, I've never in my life on social media, I guess I follow a lot of them because when I created my Instagram, it says, follow all your Facebook friends. So, you know, the competitive world is a pretty small world. People, a lot of people know other people. So basically I see girls constantly every day and it's just like, okay, another ass picture, another ass picture. And you become numb to it. And it's like something that's supposed to, you know, you're kind of only supposed to see if you're dating the person everybody sees now. And then you got all these girls who are like, gosh, I just can't find a good boyfriend, you know? And you know, let me, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of guys that do crazy stuff too, but it's a lot of these girls are really just delusional. Um, and then some of the guys are too. That's why in particular, I used to train a lot more female competitors and when bikini came, uh, came out, it was great for me because I trained tons of bikini competitors and they all won and they all would all do well. And then what happened was, um, 
time evolved, these girls got big heads and they thought they were like, I don't know, God. And then they started coaching people themselves. So now let's say you start with one prep coach. Let's say I'm prepping, I'm prepping five people. Okay. So you got five people and each one of those persons, they win a show or do well, or they might not even win a show. They might not even get to the show to compete, but then they start prepping people. So each person, each of those five people, they start prepping two people. So you got two, four, six, eight, ten. So you, then you got um, those prep coaches prepping some other so, so-called prep coaches. And so it gets so watered down. And when people want to get into fitness or they don't know what to do, they go online, which is you know social media because nobody really looks at it. There's no magazines to look at anymore. Um, there's no legitimate way to find someone that is legit because before not that many people had websites. You only had website if you're a legitimate business or trainer or something like that. Um, like I had a web, I've had a website since I was, I think like 19 or 20. Um, but now everybody has a website. Everybody has Instagram and the title is online nutrition. And it's like, God, you know, it's, it used to be such a, a career that people like looked at it and even as a trainer looked at it and like, wow, you know, that's a really admirable thing. Now it's just like being a waiter, you know, in a restaurant. It's like, you can just go in any place, do whatever. So anyways, you're looking on social media, you're looking for like a good trainer. So you're like, okay, this person, they have a lot of followings and a lot of likes and oh wow, their clients look good, but their clients could have already looked good or they could have already had good genetics. And a lot of clients I get, they look like total shit. And I'm not gonna lie to you. And I take their physiques and I'm not doing anything magic with my clients. There's no magic, you know, chemical protocols or anything like that. It's called hard work and staying on them and making progress. And, you know, with the females getting the fat off the places, fat needs to come off with the males doing the same thing while keeping their muscle. Cause when you strip, Stripping fat off is easy. You reduce someone's calories and you increase their cardio, they're going to lose fat. Okay. Um, but the important part is keeping muscle and know how to like strategize. And, and the thing is what look, what looks good on paper doesn't work in the body. So you kind of have to have just, you just have it or not. You know, it's not like you can learn how to become a good prep coach and all these prep coaches out here. It's funny. I see so many prep coaches. And, um, especially like in the Dallas area, um, they're like, okay, I'm a prep coach now. And then people start hiring them and hiring them. And it's like, I prep that person for, you know, like one show and now they're prepping like 20 clients. And honestly, they have no clue what they're doing at all because they still, I still get messages from all these people that are prep coaches and been prep coaching people for several years. And they're asking me questions. Hey, our mom, I got this client. They're eating this, this, and this, what should I do? Or this, or they call me a week before the show or text me like, Hey, you know, my coach, um, you know, that I paid X amount of money has me doing this, but I just don't feel like he has me doing this right. And it's like, why didn't you come to me? You know, I have a very good client list and I have very good clients, but I'm like, why didn't you come to me and hire me? Because I'm like all these people's teachers, because if they, if I didn't, they didn't hire me before they were working where I was, they were messaging me constantly, asking me questions, trying to pick my brain. And a lot of them, I gave them like basic info because a lot of them I felt sorry for because I had no clue about nutri basic nutrition, basic training, or anything like that. And then now these people that I felt sorry for and had no clue are <clears throat> prepping tons of clients, um, taking a lot of money away from legitimate um, prep coaches, myself and other prep coaches. I, I still do pretty well because I produce all champions, but I see a lot of, of other prep coaches and trainers having a hard time making money because you have all these goofballs out there prepping people and they have no clue what they're doing. So basically that's my rant. That's about it for today. Um, leave comments, questions below, check out my site, ArmaniDB.com. I have my supplements on there now. I have five amazing supplements. I stand behind my name. I promise you won't be disappointed in my supplements. It has all the literature on there. Check it out.
Everybody take care.